Today I'm going to show you how to properly install your new Wi-Fi printer or change the address of your old Wi-Fi printer to give it a permanent IP address so that you never lose connection with it. I've made this booklet to show you the basics of what I'm going to do today. I'm going to install the printer using these five steps. Step one, we download and install the software. Then we change the IP address. Finally, we delete the old printer and reinstall the new printer with the new settings. The fifth step is merely to make the printer default and change the page size to A4. If you live in Europe, that is. Now there are three other types of installation. For instance, if you already have a printer which is Wi-Fi, you don't have to do step one. You can simply do steps two to five to change it to a permanent IP address. In installation type three, this is for when you have already configured your Wi-Fi but the other people in the house still have their PCs connected to the old settings. This shows you how to reconfigure all those programs. Obviously, you don't need to download the software or change the IP address. You just need to delete the printer they have and install the new printer settings. In installation type 4, if you actually buy a new PC, then obviously you'll have to download the software and then jump straight to part four, where you install the printer in this manner, not through the software. You just download the software to install it onto your printer so that when you do step four, it recognizes that software. I'm just going to open the CMD file, which you need to become familiar with. It's very easy, it's not rocket science, just type in CMD and press enter. And here, the only word you need to write is ARP space hyphen A. Press enter. And this gives you the information of what is connected to your router at present. This first line, well, this 1.7 is my laptop. That will be your interface. This is in fact the router, control C to copy, open up a browser and control V paste, press enter. And you can see this is my router, but we're not going to be touching that. What we will do is look for the software. So type in the name of your printer. This one is mine and write driver. Press enter and go to the recommended internet address of your device, be that Epson or Brother. Mine is HP, so I click on this. And I scroll down and go to software utility. And it usually has the highest number of megabytes. The driver, the basic driver, only is 61, but the whole software is 206. That's the one you want. Simply click download and save. Now I've already done this, so I'm going to put it on my desktop. Before you install, make sure that your printer is turned on and connected to your PC in order to read the Wi-Fi address that your PC is currently on. Now we click continue. This is all the software that we want to install. Click next, accept, next. And this might take a while. So while we're waiting, I'll pause until it's finished. Now we are going to do a fresh install. So we would click make a wireless connection. However, if you are doing installation type four, where you have already configured the wireless, 
and you have a new PC, you just download the software, but click connect later because you're going to do this in step four with the settings that we make up. So let's go back to installation type one. We'll click wireless and next. So now we're going to allow it to access the computer router, the one that we're on. So we click next. And this is our router. This is the password. And do you want to connect and store these settings on your device? Yes, I do. Click yes and next. So now we're instructed to disconnect the USB cable from the printer. Okay, I've done that. Click next. Now we don't need to set up a fax, so we can skip that. However, it does want some private information to complete, but I'm just gonna write some gibberish because it doesn't matter. Now you can ignore this part because they just want us to pay for some ink. If you click next, you can click no ink. I don't want anything. Or you can simply just click the X at the top and say, uh, I'll complete my setup later because this isn't really part of the setup that we need. So we'll just close. So now we've completed step one. We've downloaded and installed the printer. Okay, so now let's type in CMD again. And let's type in ARP space hyphen A. And now you can see we have this number with a one on it. Now this could be the printer. The way to find out is to copy it, press control C and go into the browser. Paste in the number. And there you can see that's the address given to our printer. However, this number can change. If I was to turn the printer off and then another device on, the other device would get one and the printer would become two, which is why we need to assign it a higher number than one. We need to give it something like 230 or anything above 100. So let's do that. That's the idea of the permanent address. Now we're on this interface, we simply go to network, wireless, network address. As you can see, we've been given 1.1 as an automatic address. What we need to do is give it a manual address. Now all the data gets automatically put in for us, so we don't need to do anything. But this number one is too low. So let's suggest a manual IP. And the manual IP they've given us is, is 193. That's great. That's a nice high number. Now, if for some reason on your router, all of this remains empty and you don't know what to write in here, you can simply, I'll leave this open. You can simply type in CMD again. Write IP config space forward slash all. And then as you move to the bottom, you can see all of the necessary information that you would need. The subnet mask is here. So this is the subnet mask you can see there. The default gateway is below, that's that number, and the DNS server is here. So highlight that, that's the DNS server. It just so happens to be the same number as the default gateway. So that's how you can check or enter the digits if it isn't given to you. Now all we need to do is press apply, but remember when we apply, it will lose connection with the PC because 
it was originally 1.1 as it is shown here click apply and now this is natural because we've given it a new address so it can't communicate with it anymore what we need to do is turn off both the printer and the router and restart them and then come back to this page but with the new address and then we'll click OK and it will work so I'll press OK we'll exit out of everything and we'll need to reboot the router and the printer so I'll do that now and I'll pause okay so we've rebooted both router and printer okay so let's type in CMD again and a r p space hyphen a and now we can see that 193 is the address of our printer if we go to the browser now and type this number in so i'm going to highlight it control c and paste it in the browser now we need to go back to the network settings and we just need to click apply and there you can see the changes have been updated successfully so now it's official let's close off that and close off this so we've done steps one, we've done steps two, we've opened the CMD, we've changed the IP address from automatic to manual, we've rebooted the router and the printer, and we've activated it through the new browser settings. Now we just need to do the easy part. Step three is delete the old printer. So let's go to control panel. Click on devices and printers and you'll see the printer that we installed so we're going to delete this and we're going to install it again add a printer the printer that I want isn't listed it is listed here but don't go this route go this route instead click add a printer using this IP address next click on the TCP and type in the address that we had before we can query the printer driver next now it's looking for it use the driver currently installed yes that's from the software and here we'll just click I'll just put Wi-Fi Now it says it's been successful and print a test page. So I'll do that. And there you can hear the test page being printed. So I've done steps three and four very quickly. And the final step is just to name it as the default printer and set the paper size. So let's go back into control panel again. It's a good idea, just move that, it's a good idea to make this your default printer. So I click there, it's my default. And also being in England, you also need A4 page. So I would go into the preferences, page quality, advance, and make sure it's not on letter, but on A4. That's a problem we have in England a lot. Click apply, it's done, and now whenever you print something it will be on A4 paper. If I was to print, let's say for instance, this document, now if I click print, you can see 
it is the Wi-Fi printer that I chose and the measurements are 21 by 29 which is the A4 size so I don't want to print anything I just thought I'd show you that everything has been fixed and there you have it installation type 1 is done that's the most difficult so we've been through all the five steps and these are the same steps you would need if you do installation type 2 3 or 4 you just need to miss out certain ones so hopefully you'll enjoy your new printer and you'll never lose connection again see you on the next video